So today we'll continue with the Moving Forward series by talking about this year expansion team Austin FC. And at the end of the year, I'll also do another video about, about Austin and taking a look at how their expansion season is compared to all the expansion teams that come into MLS. But overall, when you look at this Austin team, despite the fact that they are dead last in the league and that that when you look at the records and the points total, you would think that this is one of the worst expansion teams to come into to the league. But when you actually watch them play, they don't look like one of the worst expansion teams. And if anything, I would say that they're kind of considered one one of the better ones and that the only reason why the, the stats and the points don't show is something that, I'll, of course, we'll talk a little bit later of, of the reason that is the case. But... In terms of this season, uh, their record is 8-4-19, and 19, and they have 31 points. Uh, they scored 31 goals this season, uh, allow 50 goals, and have a goal differential of minus 19. 31 goals, of course, is one of the fewest in the Western Conference, and 50 goals. I think that might be the most that anybody have conceded in the Western Conference. I might be wrong, though, but yeah, the goal differential, of course, is, is not good at minus 19, and as I mentioned, they're currently dead last in the Western Conference. Now, top goal scorer for Austin in their expansion year. Uh, believe it or not, Cecilio Dominguez is actually the top goal scorer of this team. And you would have not, not known that that, of course, is the, the case consider of how a lot of Austin fans have said that he's been a huge letdown uh, for this team. But I think Dominguez has definitely picked up in the latter part of the season. I mean, he, he did struggle a lot in the beginning of the season. I mean, besides the two goals that he scored against Colorado, he went a long stretch without getting goals. But... Recently, he started to score goals again, and he started to look like the Cecil Dominguez that Olsen, of course, was hoping they would get. But then you got, of course, Diego Fagundes with six goals, followed by Sebastian Jerusi with, with four goals. I mean, Jerusi, see, I mentioned it before. He is a player that I think I think is going to develop to be a very de decent player for, for this Austin team. And I, I think this signing that they made during the middle of the season, you know, they, they were banking the fact that he, he can be that that goal scored and also that assist player that can carry this team and so far in a short time he has definitely done so then you got Alex Rain of course with four goals followed by John Gallagher with three goals top assist leader for Austin as I mentioned Sebastian Jurisi with five assists followed by Cecilio Dominguez with four assists Diego Fagunas with three assists uh uh Komenich with three assists and then Nick Lima with three three assists for Austin FC. So, what went right for Los Verde this season? Well, for a team that is dead last, they're a very fun team to watch. And, you know, when you watch most of the games of this season that Los Verde has played, they play some, some of the most entertaining brands of soccer I've, I've, I've seen. And the only reason why, you know, when you look at the points, sort of why they, they haven't picked up a lot of points is because they just had problem in terms of finishing. Because other than that, their build-up, I think thing is considered one of the best in the league and that it's just the, the the most of the time when I see see their game it's the final third and then the finishing that just kind, kind of let them da down a little bit and then of course the other thing that went right for this Austin team is that they're still in the race in terms of winning the Copa Tias Cup so despite the fact that they are eliminated and I think I'm going to mention this when I talk about both Houston and FC Dallas well I'll probably probably won't mention it again because I think the last Copa has matchup is going to be the this weekend between Austin and FC Dallas and that one seems like it's a winner take all and whoever wins it is going to win a tro that Copa Tias Cup but even if Austin of course have been eliminated this is definitely a trophy that I'm pretty sure their supporters really care and you know if they can get a win against FC Dallas and winning the Copa Tias it has to be considered a successful full expansion season even though it if you look at the record, you probably won't think that that is the case. And they didn't think that they were going to come into the league and finish dead last in the league. So what went wrong for this Austin team? Because <clears throat> as much as they are a team that plays some very entertaining brand of soccer, uh, I mentioned how they just have problems in terms of finishing. And, you know, one of the things that I've also seen this Austin team done, done a lot is that they tend to shoot a lot from outside the box now there's nothing wrong with shooting from outside the box you know you want to of course test test the goalkeeper when you basically do that but there's times where i feel like their player maybe maybe needs to be a little bit more patient in, in terms of the development play because there's times where well, we've seen players just kind of shoot toward a goal and hope for the best and you know the other thing about taking shots out 
outside the box is not a lot of time those one is going to go into the back of the net and it it's more difficult than the one that you're going to have you're going to basically shoot trying to create chances from inside the box and that it's not a big surprise when they have shot so many chances from, from outside the box and pretty much just shooting from anywhere they tend to not have a good good kind of converting rate in in terms of those chances in fact uh, i think they're one of the worst team in terms of con conversion rate in terms of, of the shots and and shots on goal and that's kind of one of the big issue why they just couldn't finish but other than that you know they also had times where they had some big opportunity inside the box and they just could not put those chances away and you you just think that you know if this austin team can actually put away those chances this would have been a complete different conversation of of the fact that not only we're going to consider it as them as because they're one of the more successful expansion team but it will definitely show up in in the stats and show up in in the points total that they can definitely be a playoff team now the other thing that went wrong for this team is that you know eventually they did kind of figure out their their scoring a little bit but that also means the defense started to be leaky. And I had a feeling this defense was kind of le leaky from the beginning. But the only reason why they weren't conceding as much goal was because of Brad Stuver just time and time again sa saving them and making some incredible save. But, you know, ever since the second half of the season happened and ever since, you know, it seems like, like those those so-called analysts have jinxed Brad Stuver being the goalkeeper of the year in their midseason award. Yeah, he has definitely taken... A turn for the worse in terms of his form and he's just not been a as as good as a goalkeeper as he was in the beginning of the season and it's unsurprising the fact that the goals was started to 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 be leaky and that you know i think this was just a case where the defense was only good because the goalkeeper w was kind of bailing them out but once their goalkeeper started to kind of suffer from form yeah th there was no bailing out in terms of showing that that defense that was not a very good good defense whatsoever uh the the last thing that went wrong for this team is that they have problems in terms of coming out the second half strong and i've seen this multiple times where they they you know when they come out of the the second half and and they just kind kind of almost like like they're still in in the locker room and aren't ready to 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 get back to to that competitive edge because there's many times where they have conceded goals early in the second half and more times or not those goals that they concede early in the second half turns out out to 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 haunt this this team and turns out to be the difference in some of these games so that's going to be something that i think that they'll also need to try to sort out now moving forward for this austin team you know i think when you look at the this team as i mentioned i don't think this is a bad bad team whatsoever and i even said before that this team i think, think of all the teams that are are eliminated in the western conference this team probably it maybe is in the be best shape out of all of of this team that is currently eliminated in the west because when you look at at this team they do have some good foundation pieces especially on the attack you know i talked about sebastian jerusi i think he's going to be a very decent player and if cecilio dominguez can continue the form that he is maybe he's going to going to be be another that guy that they can of cor course trust on and then let's also not to mention a a player that even though he's not on the goal score sheet or on the assist leader chart but i think he's going to do very well well next season it's Musa Jite. I mean, he has been a very di dynamic player ever since he arrived with Austin and have created some some really big problem for for defense time and time time again. And I think he's going to be another player that is going to improve. And keep in mind, he's still relatively young. I think he's only like 20 years old, and he he definitely have shown this season that he has a lot of raw potential to be a very decent player. So overall, I think they do have some good foundation pieces, especially on the attack and. You know, in the midfield too, I think they also have some good foundation piece too. You know, Alex Wren, I thought he 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 did very well this season. And and you know, we talked about about this team. One of the, their biggest strength is definitely going to be on on their midfield part. And this season, at least for Alex Wren, he has really anchored that spot. But obviously, the the thing that I think they might need to definitely go into to the transfer window in the off season and definitely need some help is that they definitely need some more depth and some defensive help. And I think defensive help is probably going to be the first thing that they're going to look at because when you look at the, the, this defense, like I said, it is not very good w whatsoever. And that, you know, I think there might be a turnover in terms of how, how the back line is going to look next season for, for Austin. But, you know, again, that's going to be something that they're going to re really need to, to kind of invest heading in to, to next year. And that they also maybe need some more, more depth in their team. I mean... I said before that, you know, they have good foundation piece in terms of, 
of the attack. I think maybe they can, can sign another striker. Well, that is, we'll see whether or not if Danny Houston is is able to come back into this team. I mean, remember Danny Houston, a guy that that, that has that they, they drafted as the first pick in the expansion draft. And, you know, unfortunately, he's been de- dealing with it injury and he kind of had a, a season ending injury very early into the year and we'll see whether or not if he can come back into next season and be much stronger and and you know you know we'll also see whether or not if they're going to also add some more more depth in some other pieces because when I look at this team uh the depth is not very strong for this team and it's not a big surprise because usually expansion team you know even though they of course built, built the their squad in their first year usually that their depth is not going to be as strong as his other team and they'll probably really need to invest that and then lastly you know uh the last thing that's moving forward for austin is that how long will jo- josh will bla- last uh next season now i know this season there was actually some austin fans that have called call for the heads of josh wolf and in some way i think maybe the reason why that is the case is because the resort is not showing and i mean nowadays when you look at how how there's just so much coaching turnover and and that it doesn't take much for a coach to be be fired. Like if you're in a bad bad form, or if you're not not exceed expectation, you could potentially get yourself end up in the chalk ping, ping block. And I definitely heard a lot of whisper from the Austin FC fan base that they want Josh Wolf gone. So it's going to be interesting heading in into next year with the way that I'm pretty sure he's going to be under under the the chalk ping block again, and he's going to be under pressure to try to perform perform with this team. If things continue to go as bad as they they did this year, or at least if things are going to be be like this, where they're not going to be picking up resort and once again finish dead last and not have that progress, then yeah, there could be a a, a sense that Josh Wolf can potentially be fired for for this team. And you know, I think Josh Wolf this season. Yes, I know there's been times that I, I have questioned in terms of some some of the tactics and some of the substitute decision, but overall, I think he's done been pretty good for. This team, I mean, I like the the setup that he he of course ha- has with this team, and you know the setup he has with with this team, it just kind of makes you feel feel like this is not this doesn't look like an expansion team. I mean, there's just so many times this season I, I've said like this is too good to be an expansion team to have such a good build build up and such a good understanding thing that we've see, seen from previous expansion team. But you know, again, the reason why it hasn't translated is because they haven't really find a way to to to. To put the ball into the back net at least in the early part of the season and then of course the defense was incredible leaky especially the second half of the season but it'll be interesting to see how long he of course will last next season and whether the pressure is going to start to map on him next year for this team to to perform I mean, next season again i think there's going to be some promising and that you know i think this team should not be finished be, be finishing dead last i think this team could be be a team that could be in the fringe playoff position depending on some of the moves that they made but let me know in the comments below if you're an Austin FC fan what do you think of this video and what do you think is going to happen in this offseason to get the this team from 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 getting off the foot of the Western Conference and potentially maybe get be a competitive team heading into to next year and also as always you know what went if you're an Austin FC fan what, what do you think went right for this team what went wrong for this team in the expansion season and then moving forward heading into the second season is is there going to be a much better season compared to their first season but let me know in the comments below and yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time